On this channel recently, we have been looking at some awesome to quite frankly bizarre moments that have occurred as a result of Capcom creating crossover fighting games with Namco. From bad box art Mega Man in the Capcom produced Street Fighter Cross Tekken, to Akuma emerging as part of the official Tekken canon in Tekken 7, the two video game giants' collaborative efforts have bared some rather interesting fruit. While we have got to experience these strange yet satisfying moments, Originally, Capcom were not the only company who was set to make a full Street Fighter and Tekken crossover, because Namco also announced that they were making one too. So, over one decade on from when this mysterious game was pitched to the public, what on earth happened to it, and is there any chance that it could ever see the light of day? Let's explore. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of the lost Tekken Cross Street Fighter game. Yeah. Capcom Street Fighter dominated the fighting game scene in the early 90s with the launch of Street Fighter 2. And when a king takes his throne, challenges will arise. From America, the Mortal Kombat franchise would escalate the battle with photorealistic graphics and hyper violence largely unseen to arcades at the time. But it wouldn't be long before more competition would arise. Sega presented the world Virtual Fighter, the first ever video game to feature realistic human polygonal models. Well, realistic for the time at least anyway. One of the game's key designers was Sichi Ishii, who would soon jump ship to Namco to serve in a producer role, working on another 3D fighting game, which of course would go on to be known as Tekken. You see, Namco would bide their time until 3D graphics became capable enough to explore their true potential in a fighter, with Tekken functioning not only as an arcade hit, but soon one of the most popular games on the Sony PlayStation. The PlayStation was the perfect fit for Tekken as the console itself was great at rendering polygonal graphics of the era, where when it came to Capcom's Tag Team 2D offerings, it couldn't run them great thanks to the limited sprite processing and storage capabilities of the disc-based console. With polygonal graphics on Vogue, and when we consider that the Sony PlayStation was by far the most popular game console of that generation, as far as the mainstream casual gamer went, Capcom took a back seat in the fighting game limelight to the likes of Tekken, and soon after Soul Blade, at least in a commercial sense. As history now shows us though, a decade or so later, Capcom eventually gained their footing with the perfect blending of the formula, with Street Fighter 4 reigniting interest in their largely dormant franchise by combining 2D gameplay with 3D graphics, something they had taken a significant interest in with the GameCube's title Beautiful Joe. With bygones being bygones and an unprecedented era of fighting game crossovers available, I'm looking at you Sonic and Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the pair would work together on the Capcom produced Street Fighter Cross Tekken, with the agreement that Namco would then follow up their take on the concept with Tekken Cross Street Fighter. This series of events began to unfold at the 2010 San Diego Comic Con. It was a different era where Barack Obama was President of the United States, Queen Elizabeth was the reigning monarch of the United Kingdom, and the Wii, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 all vied for console supremacy. Speaking of supremacy, huge thank you to everyone who is subscribed to this channel, helping this content actually appear in people's feeds. The increase in people hitting the subscriber button means that more people get to see these videos, and for that I cannot thank you enough. So if you are one of the new people this video has reached, please hit that subscribe button now for regular doses of fighting games awesome history. Anyway, let's crack on with today's story. Having grown from a comic book convention to a general all-purpose nerd convention, Capcom had a banner year already at the expo, having discussed Dead Rising 2 and Marvel vs Capcom 3 at the con, and Kiji Inafune and Hironobu Takashita would tease the ill-fated Mega Man Legends 3. Let me know if you want a video on that one down the line. On day 3 of the convention, Capcom hosted a panel named Street Fighter Mania, Super Street Fighter 4 and beyond. Super Street Fighter 4 had been released earlier in the year, and Marvel vs Capcom 3 wasn't too far off, so Capcom was in the mood to discuss fighting games. In this panel, Capcom's Yoshinori Ono would tease the audience with the potential for a new Darkstalkers game, which a decade later has still got unrealized. 
Mining the 2D fighters for new content, they announced Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition, Fight for the Future. And following this, the Capcom producer would ask the audience what they would like to see added to Street Fighter 4. But before any proper requests could be made, the Tekken director Katsuhiro Harada would interrupt the panel with a new warrior has entered the ring displaying on the panel screen. Harada would ribbono, saying he's done nothing of worth in the past 10 years, and bemoaned that fans always ask him who would win in the matchup between Tekken and Street Fighter, and that today would be a good day to finalise this. Naturally, this would be a prime opportunity to reveal a trailer, and Street Fighter Cross Tekken's initial trailer now took the audience by storm. Soon after, a bit of gameplay would show that this was a bit more than a simple cinematic, and Harada confirmed that Ono would lead development on Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but he himself would run with a Namco-produced Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Before leaving the panel, Harada handed out a number of copies of Tekken 6 to help build the audience from Capcom's attendees. Following the panel, Street Fighter Cross Tekken would continue to be featured like any other game, with development proceeding and the title did come out in 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Vita, Xbox 360, iOS and Windows, but with a significant amount of criticisms. While the gameplay itself may have been solid, the insistence of purchasable gems to improve your players, alongside on this DLC being locked behind the paywall, the reveal of Bad Box Mega Man and various versions having different rosters all rubbed players the wrong way. As of 2023, Capcom have pulled the game from sale on Steam due to problems with the games for Windows Live integration, and Valve describes the game as unsupported for the Steam Deck. But there is a ridiculous $40 worth of DLC for the title available. While it may not have been the most resounding success Capcom's ever published, can we not get the game upgraded for modern play? Maybe in a disappointing Street Fighter collection alongside Street Fighter EX, 2010 and the movie titles. No joke, I would honestly buy that collection. Everyone needs a bit more Captain Sawada swagger in their life, do they not? With Street Fighter Cross Tekken done and dusted with, eyes focused on the follow-up from Namco, with little in the way of news becoming publicly available. August 2013 would finally provide us with a breakthrough, with Harada stating there were a number of reasons why they haven't been providing updates, but fans shouldn't worry. So for now at least, we could all relax knowing that progress had been happening behind the scenes. Harada would clarify regarding the lack of info that one of the reasons is Street Fighter Cross Tekken was released. That still had updates until recently. One interesting thing we've seen with that title when it came out was that it's not quite what we expected. It might seem like we haven't started on it at all, but the character lineup has been decided upon since a very long time ago, and we've already finished the Polygon model's moves and systems. Still, time would march on. Between the release of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Bandai Namco would release Tekken Revolution, Soul Calibur Lost Swords, J-Star's Victory Versus, Tekken 7, and the ridiculously named Pokemon-themed fighter known as Pokémon Tournament. All of this is of course between the almost countless games based off of the anime and action franchises they had the rights to, such as My Hero Academia, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, Kamen Rider, Gundam, One Piece and more. You could argue these licensed titles may have taken up a bit more of attention from Namco than a follow-up to a weekly performing crossover company title that you're likely not going to get the full amount of returns on given that Capcom were going to probably get to take a take too. Many would begin to theorise that because Capcom Street Fighter Cross Tekken had underperformed, rather than Namco make their own full-blown crossover, they opted for the more minimal approach of adding Akuma to the Tekken 7 roster. Some felt his inclusion marked the end for Tekken Cross Street Fighter, whereas others hypothesised that it was instead a tease for bigger things to come. As time would pass by, release of such a game would begin to appear less and less likely, but we would finally hear something new from Harada in 2019. After finishing Tekken 7's ninth DLC pack, he would speak with VGC in Tokyo, whereby he would comment to them that he wondered whether or not he should really finish Tekken Cross Street Fighter. He would outline that while he felt passionate about the project, he was questioning if the game was economically worth it, with him also stating, Yes, I am emotionally up for it. I still want to release the game, 
However, as much as I want to proceed with the project, things have changed a lot since 2012. So I need to get approval and I need to speak to Capcom again as well. They may say no now. I was excited to see how well Bandai Namco could convert 2D characters like Akuma from Street Fighter and Geese from the King of Fighters into 3D models and make them look really sexy visually. Concluding regarding Tekken Cross Street Fighter that I was excited about that and I have a passion for it but my logical and business thinking has me wondering if I really should do it. Such an interview would also spill out to us more information on why the game didn't come out years before, despite what they had made so far looking really cool. He adds, when the game reached 30% completion, Capcom released Street Fighter V and they released Tekken 7. Some of the best fighting games of all time in his opinion and difficult to follow up. Those titles are some of the best fighting games ever and they became very successful. So then I started to wonder, do I really want to attempt to compete with these huge titles? It could end up splitting the community. That was a serious consideration from the marketing perspective. So I decided to hold off releasing the game for one or two years. Following that, Tekken 7 is now doing very well as a service game. Traditionally, the life cycle of a fighting game is very short. Maybe one or two years and then you make a sequel. But Tekken 7 is very successful as a service game with its DLC. That makes it much harder to justify releasing another game while Tekken 7 is still doing so well. So as you can see, as of 2019, there was a lot of reasons why the game still didn't exist. With one of them being that Namco were intent with making a fortune by releasing wave after wave of DLC for Tekken 7. So I guess part of the reason as to why a Tekken Cross Street Fighter game wasn't surfacing was why bother when you're already offering up a commercial success. Despite all of these very legitimate reasons why such a game still wasn't on sale yet, later that same year we would hear from Harada again. This time it was via Twitter, where he would post a poll to try and gauge if people were still interested in the title. Contradictory to his previous interview whereby he said that Street Fighter V and Tekken 7 got in the way of Tekken Cross Street Fighter, this time around he posed that from a marketing standpoint, those game successes justified there was a market for his unfinished game to succeed in. So Harada was once again teasing us about this mysterious project. Once again, years would pass with nothing really happening, which brings us along to the summer of 2021. As of June of that year, Harada would state on a live stream that the project had officially been stopped, only ever reaching about 30% done circa 2016. In the same stream, he would mention that he was particularly proud of making dull sim stretchy in the Tekken engine, as well as how polished some of the female character models for the canned game looked. He would also put a common theory to bed that it was true that Tekken 7's Akuma had indeed originally been made for Tekken Cross Street Fighter. So that's the Tekken Cross Street Fighter story over with, right? Well, no, as the problem with such a statement from the stream is that Harada soon backtracked on it, claiming it was a mistranslation as he naturally speaks Japanese to his home nation audience. When questioned about the blunder, Harada responded via a twit longer, where he would comment. First of all, at around 21 minutes and 25 seconds, he says, Ima Tometi Masuyo, which means it's pending state, similar to Paul's. And this is the same word we have been talking about before. So, up to 30% of the development was in progress, but now is still pending. This is still the status of the project. Next, we are talking about artist collaboration starting at minute 22. This is a story about how we had a famous artist draw a certain illustration for us during the development of Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Tekken also has illustrations in collaboration with famous artists, something like that. I say Okura Iri Ni Natan Davu Na in Japanese about this illustration collaboration. For some reason, the meaning of the word Okura Iri is Project Died. But the original meaning of Okoru Iri is be shelved or put in storage. Contracts with artists and collaborators outside of development are subject to terms and conditions, including duration, so we do not own the rights to them indefinitely. So this one has been put in storage for now. 
You can see that the original Japanese and the English subtitles give a very different impression, so people who can hear Japanese are not particularly interested in this topic thing. In any case, the status is not much different from the status I told you about before. Well, the fact that the status has not changed is not a nice thing for us and for you. We are still hopeful that Tekken Cross Street Fighter will resume development when the opportunity arises. However, such a title cannot be moved just for the convenience of one company in terms of marketing and branding, and it also affects each other's development resources. For now, we are just waiting for the right opportunity. This is sometimes a problem because it is very difficult to translate, including my way of speaking, and also because it is impractical for me to do all the subtitle check-in for this volume. In this article, I am writing my own English, but I may have made some mistakes. If there is anything you don't understand, let's talk again sometime. Since this incident, many gamers have questioned if the game's development is actually paused or if this broadcast was a developer backing away from publicly killing a game that had fallen by the wayside. Some speculated that Namco may have needed Capcom's involvement to announce the end of the project, which has held the game's public cancellation back. With us now 11 years removed from the original Tekken Cross Street Fighter announcement, one thing is for sure though, that as each year passes, we are less and less likely to get this game. Well, as far as using the 30% work that was originally made for the game anyway. Like many failed game productions in the past, sometimes not saying anything for years is saying everything, and perhaps that should have been the best course of action when it comes to this one, as fans have been teased time and time again only to receive nothing. At this point, if any work on the game still exists, it would almost definitely have to be revised for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X compatibilities. I for one would be interested to see this come to fruition, as the evolution of the franchises means that you have a wealth of new world warriors to enter the ring with Tekken's newest creations. If anything, we can get the bad box Mega Man to face off against Pac-Man, but this time on Namco's home turf. Who wouldn't want to see such an epic rematch? As I mentioned earlier, I am hugely thankful to those who hit that subscribe button as it helps secure this channel's future. So please, please, please do that if you found enjoyment today. And a huge shout out to my friend Chad Bonin who helped write this episode. If you're a long term diehard viewer of this channel, consider backing it on Patreon. And for those new, check out my bad box art Mega Man video or my one on Akuma's Tekken story. Yeah, cheerio.